Hello everybody, this is your Mr. Security702 and today I'm going to do an update on my whole plan of attack for this particular channel and get into my topic which is the fallibility of the scientist. Okay, I have started up a blog, link in the daily McBob, uh, on the chemist's view of science type of thing. And uh, I am going to update it every Friday now. I'm gonna give myself a set schedule for that. Uh, and I have my, I have a, uh, I'm part of a collaborative channel now. Yet again, link in the new Dealing McBob. Uh, regarding, yeah, and my part of it is Science Friday. Uh, for my collaborative channel, I'm gonna take a small little piece of my blog and, uh, have a real world, like, common person application of my blog. Uh, this week, I, uh, for that, I did the lab notebook and how you can change yourself using a lab notebook type thing. Uh, link to the particular video in the dealing with Bob. Uh, I am going to do a similar type of thing for this channel. Uh, only it's going to be a little bit more technical minded. Uh, I am going to grab a topic from my, uh, from the blog post and, uh, do a video on it for this channel uh, and I'm gonna have that posted either the night of or the day after uh, I posted my blog and uh, I will have that posted uh, after I post my bl uh, blog but before 5 p.m. Uh, American West Coast time, Saturday. Uh, so that's the plan. In my most recent blog post, I uh, talked about the fallibility of scientists how scientists are, in fact, human, and therefore, uh, scientists are, as being human, fallible, mortal, make errors, make mistakes, and I grabbed two particular uh, examples both of them from the periodical science magazine. Uh, one of them in which Zewen Zhang, I think I might be pronouncing that wrong, uh, who's a biochemist, uh, posted an article in science and stopped making his lab notebooks available to the public and to the scientific community, therefore making his experiments non-reproducible. And the error in that is that uh, the big thing about any science experiment is that the person who does the experiments and makes conclusions from those experiments has to make the detailed procedures of the lab known to everybody so that so those labs can be reproducible so that 
everybody can confirm the results for themselves. But Zhang has not done that. So that's a mistake on his part. I also took another thing from Science Magazine by uh, Annabelle Bellaqui. I think I'm mispronouncing that one too. About uh, Reactomere, which is another biochemical thing. Uh, and the controversy with that is incomplete uh, online supplemental material to the article as well as impossible chemistry. Now the incomplete back, uh, supplemental material is the fault of Anna but uh, as far as I can tell nobody actually went ahead and uh, reproduced the experiments she's done. Uh, thing is, Anna is, and her gr uh, group, ha uh, are pretty unknown in the scientific community, but all of the uh, people spouting impossible science are big names and are using that to only say impossible chemistry uh, in theory and not actually performing the experiments themselves. I mean, they can. Uh, the lab notebooks are there. The experiments are reproducible. But as far as I can tell, nobody reproduced them, so... Impossible science? Impossible chemistry? Possibly. But we cannot know that unless we actually, physically reproduce the experiments. That's just me. Uh, and my thing is, though, this is the big names of science. Having this whole God complex going on about them saying, oh yeah, we're well known, you're not, believe us over them, believe our word over theirs, because we're well known and they're not. That's not how science works. Yeah, right, produce the experiments. You don't believe it, you reproduce the experiments. That's the way science works. Duh. The point here is to not be completely trustful of scientists. Scientists can be wrong. Science can be wrong. Uh, recently you've heard, uh, you have likely heard about this uh, whole spiel with the uh, neutrino traveling faster than the speed of light. It's still in the research phase, but the more it's, con it's, it actually has been confirmed by at least one other source that I am aware of. Uh, so it's looking good that, uh, at least on the part, uh, particle scale, uh, matter can travel faster than the speed of light, which proves Albert Einstein wrong on the whole speed limit thing. So even Albert Einstein was not correct 100% of the time if this uh, proves correct. So, scientists can be wrong. Uh, so, always be skeptical. I'm not saying 
that you should believe every scientist is always wrong 100% of the time because that's not true either. That's a fallacy. Scientists are not correct 100% of, of the time and simultaneously scientists are not incorrect 100% of the time. So anytime a scientist makes a claim that you don't understand, uh, that you have trouble believing, research it. Go to scientific periodicals, uh, science magazine, science magazine, uh, stuff of that nature. Uh, go online, Google it. No, no, download some uh, uh, university uh, lectures. Uh, MIT has a, a pretty sizable selection of uh, open courseware videos, uh, video lectures. Uh, university of California, San Diego has a lot of uh, podcasts that you can get off of iTunes. Uh, email the scientists themselves, ask them questions. Uh, and this, in, uh, this includes all scientists, Brian Greene, uh, Stephen Hawking, though a response from him would uh, take a lot longer than most everybody else because of a physical disability, but, you know. Uh, this includes Kip Thorne. I, I always, when I say Stephen Hawking, I also think Kip Thorne because of that famous bet he made in the 90s. Was it the 90s? Yeah, it was the 90s. Might have been the 80s. Yeah. Uh, and this includes me. Don't trust everything I say to be true 100% of the time. And don't take everything I say to be false 100% of the time. If I say something that you don't understand, ask me. Research it yourself. Do the appropriate legwork. Don't dismiss it out of hand automatically. And do not accept it automatically. Do the appropriate legwork to understand it, and if you still have beef with it, ask around. Like, bring up the beef, preferably with the person who said it. And this applies to every facet of reality, not just science. Well, it applies to science, of course. Uh, applies to religion, applies to government, uh, applies to business, applies to law, applies to every facet of... As Carl Sagan once said, if we are unable to be skeptical of those in authority, then we are up for grabs. Well, that's all I have time for t for today. Uh, this is your Mr. Security 702 signing.